Um, I gotta say, I'll, I'll pleasure introducing this gentleman here. If you notice the title of today's event, how to be a badass. Yeah. Badass, right? The Chamber of Commerce is using the word badass, right? <laughs> this man made that happen, so things are lightening up a little bit. And, it's, uh, and I appreciate that. I mean, that was a milestone, just making that happen. I really appreciate it. Um, New Scooters for Less is the number one genuine scooter dealer in the nation. He is an influencer in his industry. He's won the Business of the Year Award for the Chamber of Commerce. He's an Impact Award winner, a UFD 100 honoree, and a Purpose 20 Award winner. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen Colin through his Facebook videos, his vlogs. Uh, he's really getting out there and utilizing social media to help promote not only Gainesville, but his business and himself as a speaker. So please put together a round of applause for our guest speaker today, Mr. Badass himself. Best intro I've ever gotten. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Great. Great. Yes. My presentation, I'm not even going to talk about new scooters for less. And if you have questions about my scooter dealership and anything that I've done up to this point, which is 14 years, I will be happy to talk about it later. I want to get straight into this pres presentation on how to be a, a social media bad at sign dollar sign dollar sign. All right. Now, first, why are you all here? It's because of clickbait. Okay. So, what is clickbait? <laughs> Did anybody see this ad over the last week or so? All right, so clickbait, this is a way, it's like, hey, I got this, I got this badass presentation, so how to be a social media badass, how can we fill the room, how do we get people there, and that's called clickbait. Now, this is actually kind of a negative thing to do when it comes to social media, but I really wanted to uh, fill the room and get you guys here and, and have some fun, so that is, uh, that is what clickbait is, all right? Now, the truth is, much as I love you guys, it's gonna be. There's no way I can teach you how to be a social media badass in one presentation. And I don't even consider myself a social media badass to this day. There's tons about it that I don't even know. I mean, I, I'm I'm ex learning new things every single day. But I want to highlight several different things to try to give you guys a ton of value when you leave today. Now, the truth is, social media has just grown so much from the day of MySpace, right? How many people in the room had a MySpace account? All right? Now, my username was calling all the girls. Right? That was my username. Now, I thought it was funny because I, just, I had my status as swinger on, on MySpace. My girlfriend at the time, now wife, didn't appreciate that very much. But this, I mean, let's just face it, social media has come a long way from the days of MySpace, right? And today, I'm gonna give you a few tips on ways to elevate your social media game. And the first is to stop selling, okay? Every single business owner that I know thinks that social media is a way to promote their business. Sell, 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 20% off this, we got a big sale here, yada, yada, yada. It is not about you, okay? This is Kanye West, guys. Kanye West is full of himself, and that's all right. <laughs> it's not about you, okay? It's about providing value to your customers, guys. How can you provide that value? Sure, you're going to have a sale once in a while, but if the only content you are putting out is sale, 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 or we're offering this, we're offering this. I mean, it's just not going to work. You have to focus on providing your customers with value. And, what, and it doesn't, there's so many different ways to do that, and we can get into that a little bit more later. Now, this is something that has just excelled new scooters for less in so many ways, and that's customer service, okay? Providing customer service. If you can start looking at social media as a way to deliver an epic customer experience to your customers, then that's how you will win. Okay, now some of the ways that we do this, for example, I have one for everybody in the room today. I have swag bags for you all. There's a business card in each bag. This is my business card. Okay, does everybody know what this is? This is a Snapchat code. Okay, now the way this conversation normally works is 
We go, there's usually a big celebration at our shop. Customer comes in, they buy a scooter. Big celebration, bell ringing, loud music, everything. And I'll go up to that customer and I'll shake their hand and I'll hand them one of these business cards and I'll say, if you ever need anything, you can reach to, out to me directly. This is my business card. This is how you can get to the owner. Now, in today's world, so many business owners are trying to like not have customer interaction, which just blows my mind. I want to develop relationships with my customers. I want them to know that they can come to me for anything. Now, what's crazy about this is that we started doing this. We literally put this Snapchat code on everything. We have it here, we have it on our invoices, on our merchant receipts, on our t-shirts. I mean, it is everywhere. And the Huffington Post actually wrote about it in a, on one of their blogs and how small businesses are snapping their way to success. But I don't even look at it as trying to, you know, build, I, not, I, don't, I don't look at it as a, way to, as a way to make money. I look at it as a way to connect with my customers and build those relationships because I know that that is what leads to the epic word of mouth that brings future customers in. Um, here's an example of snaps that happened between me and some of my customers, right? This is a customer named Ember. She says, I'm like one day away from selling Lenny, who once was per in perfect running condition, but now I'm having this problem and I'm sad. And I, sent, I just reply back, will Lenny stay running if you hold the throttle just a little when you stop? <laughs> yes, if I can keep, if I keep revving Lenny, he stays running. Not sure if revving is the right word, LOL. And I'm like, it just needs an idle adjustment, no biggie, swing by, there's no charge. And, oh my gosh, you're the best, okay? like. It's just creating that conversation with my customers and building those relationships with them. Now, what's really, really cool about this well, is that it helps me reduce negative reviews. Okay, this is something that's been huge for us. Because I'm giving them that business card, they feel like I'm more accessible, right? They're willing to reach out to me if they have a problem and give me the opportunity to fix it versus just going to social media and venting or going to Google and leaving a negative review. I'm making myself more accessible and I'm taking action based off you know, their message to me and I'm fixing their problem. This reduces the number of negative reviews we might get because let's just face it, like, we're in a world today where if we have a problem, it's just easier, right? It's just easier to go to social media, get on Facebook and be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. I, if I'm being honest with you guys, one of the things that I really don't like too much is this Gainesville business word of mouth okay it's because it's just easier to get on there and complain about a business than it is to actually uh, people people would rather do that than just contact the business and say hey I had this problem I want to see if you'll resolve it and we just make the assumption that nobody's going to resolve it if you contact my company me via snapchat or, or if you contact me with a problem like I'm going to try my very best to resolve that issue Right? And I think we need to create ways, that more opportunity for that. And this is a great way of doing it. Now, Snapchat's not for you. Facebook Messenger is great for this. You can even set up a bot to automatically reply and say, hey, thanks so much for messaging me. I, I've received it. I'm just not at, my, I'm not at my computer right now, but I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And you can set up an instant reply with Facebook Messenger for that. A lot of people are using Instagram and Twitter direct messaging. That's great as well. Um, let me get a sip of water real quick. Now the next thing goes straight into that, right? It's about engaging and building relationships. Now, relationships are the key to any business. We all know that, whether it's with our customers, our team members, relationships is what it's all about. Now, the way we do that with social media is by being involved in the conversations. I can't tell you guys how much time I spend going through my customers' feeds. Like, I'll get on Instagram, I'll go through, I'll see a picture. This young lady actually took a picture of, uh, of scooters, a line of scooters on campus, and it had the trees. It was right down Library West, and she, and she just had that picture. And I commented on her Instagram, I love this picture. It's so great to be a Florida Gator, right? She took a screen, like... This blows my mind. She took a screenshot of that. She then tweeted that. New Scooters for Less commented on my Insta all time high. So she was just impressed that we like commented. A company like commented on our all time high. 
I then, you know, she didn't tag New Scooters for Less, so this required me going into Twitter and go it's like Googling your name. I searched for New Scooters for Less to see if anybody's talking about us. She was. And then I said, you tweeting about it is an all-time high for us. Right? So I just kept that engagement going. It's a focus on building these relationships. If somebody comments on your Facebook page, if somebody comments on your Instagram account, if somebody tweets you, it doesn't matter. If they comment on your YouTube video, talk to them. Respond back. That's how you build the relationships. It's all about creating that community. Uh, another great way that we do this is using the tools that the social media elements give us. For example, has anybody, have you guys done polls before on like Instagram accounts? This is a great way to build that engagement. You know, these, these uniforms came out, say, guys, like, what do you think? You like, yes or no? Like, it creates that engagement, and that's another way you can do it, and then you can create more conversation that way. Now, one of the greatest things that we've accomplished with social media, I'd say accomplish, it's just one of the fun things I like to do is using social media to say thank you. So this is a prime example, right? Let me... It's right there on the chair. Okay. So this customer bought a scooter last Saturday. And what I will do is I will open up our Twitter account. I will go search for her, right? This is her handle. I'll go, Emma, Lori. I find her. I will follow her. I will open up a tweet. I'll click the little picture button. There's a little thing right here that says video. I'll click it. I'll selfie style, right? And then I'll say, hey, Emma, what is up? This is Colin from New Scooters for Less. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for buying that lime green buddy from us last Saturday. These guys wanted to say thank you very much as well. And I can't tell you, guys, tell you how much the business means to me. Enjoy your scooter. If you ever need anything, just holler at me and uh, enjoy it. Thank you so much. Bye. Right? Create a 20 second tweet. Hit done. And then I sent tweet. All right, that just goes to her. It's a little personalized thank you from the owner of the company yeah. to that customer. Guys, it's that easy. And it does so much. It builds those relationships with your customers. Now, my next tip is a biggie. And that is to stop ignoring new platforms. Okay, I cannot tell you how many people Say, oh, I'm too busy, there's not enough time. Colin, like, I just don't get Snapchat. Um, that's, that's for kids. That's for, that's for kids, okay? You guys, here you guys are. You guys are sending poop emojis to each other, right? You're sending, like, you send poop emojis to each other, but Snapchat is for kids. Well, you know, like, Facebook was for kids until it wasn't, right? Our grandparents got on Facebook. <laughs> Then everybody, like, kids are like, oh, like, I'm going to be on the platform where my parents are, so I'm going to go over here to Instagram, yeah. right? That aged up. Now it's the same thing with Snapchat. Well, actually, there's another platform out there that these kids are, like, holding their phones out and they're li lip syncing to songs. It's called Musical.ly. It's got hundreds of millions of people on it, but they're all kids because it's for kids. Yep. Well, it won't be for long. This stuff will age up. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend all of your time there. I'm not saying you need to spend, you know, this is great for me because this is obviously college demographic right now, right? But it's not going to be forever. So I would encourage you to download these platforms, play around with them. Heck, if you just need to practice, like snap me, <laughs> we'll go back and forth and just figure it out. You just need to know how it works. So that way, maybe it, maybe it does become relevant for you to stop taking 5% of your time and start investing 40% 40 40 of your time at some time in the future. Does that make sense? So stop ignoring platforms. And if I have another person tell me that they've had a company for 30 years and never had a Facebook, I'm going to scream. <laughs> okay, because that is just opportunity for somebody else. They're going to come in and they're going to kick your ass. Okay, you need to make sure that you have 
a Facebook account, social media accounts, period. And obviously you guys care enough because you're here. Um, now, just to give you an idea, this is my iPhone. Okay, this is the home screen. This is my, I have a little social media folder. And I wanted to give you guys an idea of what I do when it comes to social media. Now, I'm not active in every single platform all the time, but I experiment. Okay, this is, these are the platforms that I'm most active in. Facebook, Facebook page, you know, for New Skiers Less and my personal page. Uh, I mean, Snapchat, all of it. This is a new app that just recently came out called Vero. Um, just doing an experiment there. It's kind of like a blend of several different applications. But once you swipe, this is what the other folders look like. Okay, I, anytime a new social media platform comes out, I will download it and I will play with it and I will learn it. And, and may, I'm not spending all of my time doing this, but I'm just tasting. I'm tasting. I'm just seeing what's, what people are interested in. I'm just trying to figure it out so I understand it, right? Now, the other thing is to get out of your comfort zone, all right? So many people will tell me that, oh, I can't. Colin, I don't even know how you do it. Like, you hold your phone out and you do these selfie videos and stuff. I'm like, yep. Yeah. They're just not willing to try. So here's what I want everybody to do. Everybody open up Facebook right now. Let's do this together. Come on. This is going to be the greatest moment ever. <laughs> open up Facebook. There is a little button. If you look where you put your status, a little button that says live. I want you to press that button. Where's that? <laughs> Where you have your status, click, click live. Now, in the description, you can put something like, Colin Austin is the very best. <laughs> Some, something, right? Go ahead, type something in the, the description. Here we go. Everybody turn your phone sideways like this. I like it better as a horizontal. And then on the count of three, we're going to press this button. We're all going to go live at the same time. Gainesville's not going to know what to do right now. Okay? Ready? Three, two, one. And don't, don't be afraid to actually say something. <laughs> you got to, like, say something. Hey, guys, what's up? I'm just here giving a talk on social media. And uh, we're all going live at the same time right now. Everybody in the room is live on Facebook. Hey, Claudia. So, you know, like, it's just it, baby. Look, look at all these guys. Learning how to be a social media bad. There you go. Got it? <laughs> try to go, try to go. Some people can't even go live because there's not enough bandwidth in the room. So there you go. Teaching everybody to get outside of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to go live on Facebook. There it is. Everybody say bye to my Facebook feed. Yeah. Woo. Say hi, Colin. Hi. So guys. Oh. <laughs> and because I'm going to fly through these next few things because I want to get to your questions. I want to be able to help you out in what you're doing. But I'm going to tell you guys real quick. The biggest mistakes I see people making with social media. Are you ready? Number one, they are not using captions on video. Okay, if you're putting out video content, you need to make captions. 85% of people on Facebook Watch video in complete silence, 85%. So if you put a video out on Facebook and you do not have captions, nobody is listening. Okay? So that's a good question. When you upload the video in your page, there's actually a, the new platform. I wish I would have done a screenshot for you. I'd be happy to show you afterwards. But if you have a Facebook page, right? So if I'm doing it for New Scooters for Less, I upload a video there will be a series of things on the right hand side during upload. So one will be like, Create a thumbnail. So you can create a thumbnail. One will be captions. Facebook, you can actually hit generate captions. Facebook will do it for you. This is what I do a lot of the times. I'll hit generate captions, and then I'll go back and capitalize the things that need to be capitalized. I'll, you know, If I do new scooters for less, it always does F-O-R less. I mean, everybody knows our brand is the number four, so I'll change that. Those little things, but you can hit auto-generate, and it just helps do that. Now, there is a company. I actually think I might have a slide in here for it. If you do like YouTube video content, there's a company called Rev, rev.com. 
and you can actually give them access to your YouTube account and they will just go in and they'll just caption it for you and you pay them a dollar a minute. So if it's a 10 minute video, it's $10. Well, YouTube okay? has a caption on their own. So. It does. The auto generated captions usually aren't that great, um, but you can absolutely do it. You can, you can spend the time and just do them yourself and go in and, and create the captions if you wish. Um, because we're doing so much content at speed, we just outsource it, okay? But just realize that 85% of people aren't listening, okay? The next is that they aren't cons consistent. Content needs to be consistent. This is a show that I do for just dealerships. It's unlisted, but the reason I took a screenshot of this is because you can see here one video per week. So it's a show that I do. do actually, it went live while I was doing this. It gets sent out in a newsletter 12 p.m. every Wednesday. Okay, now you create that consistency. It's like when we were expecting to watch Friends on Thursday night at 7 p.m. <laughs> You're creating that expectation that it's going to be there. So consistency is absolutely key. Be consistent with the content that you're putting out. Don't treat social media as a to-do item. Okay, as soon as, if, if you're in here right now and social media is just something that you feel like, oh man, as a business, like I know I'm supposed to do it, like check, I need to make a post, Instagram post, check. Like as, as soon as you start looking at it in that kind of, you know, ca capacity, you're not doing anything for your business. Okay, it needs to be part of your strategy. I'm okay with it being part of your marketing strategy. But the marketing that I like to see people do is not necessarily 20% off, but creating value for your customers so they keep coming back and they're learning from you and they want to be a part of your community. That creates the word of mouth marketing that I love. So don't treat it as a to-do item. They think posting is just enough, right? Like I'm gonna go on Facebook, I'm gonna post about something and they think that's enough. Guys, these algorithms are changing all the time. Facebook is not, you know, if you just go on your Facebook page and post, it's not getting seen. If it's a business page, you need to put dollars behind it. Now, this is what's so great about Facebook is that you can target so strategically. You guys saw this video in Facebook. It's because I was targeting business owners, people interested in social media. I mean, I had a whole long list of people that I wanted to see it, um, and I sponsored it, right? So it's, it's a sponsored post. Put dollars behind the post. The other thing is that they are impatient, okay? The, they expect results quickly. This is, this is long-term stuff. You can't just download an Instagram account and then after two months think you're gonna bank off of that. Like, it's building community. It is a long-term investment. It's a long-term strategy. So don't think, and, and don't get down. Like, we started doing a vlog a year, a year ago, and this is, these are just videos that I'm putting out. It's just kind of sharing my story, showing what I'm doing. And it, we went, it just took so much time and it's still only at 1200 subscribers. Uh, but it's just, it takes time guys. You have to make that investment. And again, the consistency is what starts to build the following. Just, re just remember when it comes to following, it doesn't matter if you have 5 million viewers or 10,000, like it doesn't matter. What matters is the depth of those relationships. This is uh, somebody that I follow with Gary Vaynerchuk. He talks about like the depth of the relationships versus the width. It doesn't matter how many, it, it matters how deep those relationships are with those followers, okay? That's it for me. In terms of my little presentation, I wanted to save some time for some Q&A. Now, I would encourage you guys, like please go and like follow my YouTube stuff. So my YouTube account is youtube.com forward slash Colin Austin. This is a new page that I'm building out. Everything before was on New Scooters for Less, which is nsrl.tv. You can type that in your browser and it'll go straight there. Um, but subscribe to these channels because we're putting out a lot of content and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be doing on my personal page is about social media, um, business leadership, all of that kind of stuff. And um, that's it. This is how you can connect with me personally. I love building relationships. I love Gainesville so much. I want to make Gainesville just one of the greatest communities on the planet and um and i'm at we're doing a podcast we're doing so much and i would love to build relationships with you guys so please just reach out to me just say hello and um and let's and let's start that conversation and start that that relationship okay um what questions do you guys have yes um, we do a lot of
sometimes it seems like maybe if you're Have, um, you're asking for somebody who has recently searched um, for wed wedding dresses um, and somebody who has recently searched something else, they might conflict. I would have to like sit down with you and learn quite a bit more about the business, but what I would try is just to broaden who you're targeting. So maybe like would it benefit you to target the bride's mom? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and maybe you, and maybe you have to create an ad or content that is that's going to cater more to that particular audience. But I would I would just try to change up my strategy yeah. versus just targeting the the bride herself. Sure. I would and what's what's what you have to get in the habit of doing is creating an ad that is geared towards that particular audience. Like the ad that you might be putting in front of the bride might not be the same ad that you're putting in front of dad. Does that make sense? So just think think about how you can change the messaging or change the type of ad in order to get the engagement or to get the click through or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to take them from the ad to a website? Like what are you what's the goal of the ad itself? a call. A call. Incomes, like specific. That would be helpful. You can target by incomes. If you want to target, you want to target parents who make over a hundred thousand dollars. You can absolutely do that. So you can go in there, like, uh, just literally start typing incomes in there. I think I think it's one of the. I'm trying to think. There's different categories, right? There's behaviors. There's interests. There's um, job types. Like one of them is income, and you can target a specific income. I would just focus on the higher ones if you're trying to get higher incomes. So when you do You decide. So, like, you can do when you're creating the Facebook ad content itself. Like, when you go, does everybody know how to make a Facebook ad? Yeah. Facebook.com forward slash power editor is where you need to go. Um, we just usually boost posts. Okay, I would try to do do it on the back end because when you boost a post, uh, the difference between boosting a post and an ad is that the post is on your actual Facebook page. Okay, now when you do an ad. The ad might not necessarily be on the Facebook page. You don't have to, like, for example, I'll put out, if I, were, if I was doing what you're doing, I would create 10 different ads. I would play with different demographics. So I would do one that's like towards the, the bride, maybe one that's towards dad, one that's towards mom. Like I would do 10 different variations of the ad, and I'd put them all up at the same time. After 48 hours, I would go back, and I would see which one has the most engagement. And then I would delete eight of the other eight. If two of them are doing really well, then I would delete eight. Does that make sense? Because then you can see who is actually interacting with the ad. And, and hopefully, like, if the, if the objective is to get a call, then hopefully you're getting calls, right? And if you're not getting calls, then you need to redo the whole strategy. You need to find a better strategy. But you're not going to put ten things on your Facebook page and boost ten of those. Does that make sense? Right. So does that answer your question or help a little bit? Yeah. I'll be happy to talk more afterwards. Yeah, I noticed you really focused on video on a couple of things. It seems that those get a lot better response than just the standard text and a picture nowadays. Right. No, video is huge. Um, we're in the process of building a whole media company at the moment. And, uh, and it's because of everything that's happened in my life over the last year with video. I would have to... To, it's hard for me to answer your specific question. I would just have to like learn more about it so I could guide you, and I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, I would just have to learn more. I I don't know if I know the answer at this time. Yes. How important is it to figure out your personal brand, your company's brand, before you start going out and doing this sort of stuff? So I'm really bad about the personal brand thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as much as. As pumped me up as I am about doing presentations like this and be like, how to be a social media badass, like I'm actually really humble about stuff. <laughs> so I, it's funny, we were we were meeting, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago on a Friday night. It was me and a, a couple of, a few of the people that are in this uh, new media objective, and we're sitting there and we're like just using the words personal brand and talking about what are we going to do on the Colin Austin page is like awkward to me. 
Um, but what I've realized is that it's extremely important. And, and here's why. If you go back, maybe, can I just do this? If I click this page, if I were going to redo this whole thing, okay, I would actually put these blogs, which were very heavily about new scooters for less, I would put them right here on the Colin Austin page. Right? The reason being is because it's easier for me to connect to a human being than it is for me to connect to a scooter dealership. Right? Now you guys might like go and watch because like you're interested. You know, maybe it's like, oh, I know Colin Austin owns this business. Like most of these connections came from human relationship with me. Like they know me, so they want to go check out the stuff that I'm doing in my business. But on a grander scale, like marketing that on a nationwide scale, whatever it is, it's going to be easier for people to connect with Colin Austin, the guy who built the number one scooter dealership in the country, versus new scooters for less. Does that make sense? So it makes, it, it's extremely important. Um, but I wouldn't have my personal brand if it wasn't for building one of the top dealerships in the country. So obviously we spend a lot of ad spend on promoting and building new scooters for less. Does that answer the question? It's great, thank you. So I know I mean, you touched on it a little bit. You said something to the effect that uh, Facebook algorithms change quite frequently. And I know that to, to generate engagement, it used to be, I think, uh, Facebook posts that got a lot of likes and shares. I think the recent update has something to do with uh, posts that generate conversation and community. And I was wondering if, if you guys had, you know, if you dealt with anything like that. Yeah, you know, my favorite stuff to share is, well, I'll just tell you from personal experience, like, the algorithm's going to change tomorrow, so what I tell you today doesn't really even matter. Um, but currently, like, I shared, like, some video of a dolphin knocking some guy off of a surfboard. Oh, Everybody see this video? Yeah. yeah. So, like, tons of engagement. Create a lot of conversation. I'm go Here's the thing, though. When, those, when the people start commenting, most business owners are just ignoring it. I go in there, and I, I start laughing at their comments. I start saying, oh, my gosh, you're right. That's so great. Or if that would have happened, you know. I start commenting and trying to further those relationships, being part of the conversation. So, yes, like sharing, sharing viral content on my Facebook page has definitely helped bring attention to my Facebook page, but it's taking it a step further is where you need to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like again, the algorithm will change tomorrow, <laughs> so it's so hard to predict. You just have to keep experimenting, and that's the thing. Like so many people, especially in the Gainesville community, label me as a gains as a social media expert. Like I don't think I'm an expert. I'm just somebody who gets on social media all the time. Like we're driving here, I'm on social media and I'm like figuring it out and I'm talking to people. You know, I'm just I just practice it all the time. Um, and, there's, it, and this is why it's so hard to do a, a, a presentation on social media is that there's so many other things, right? Things not touched on but important. Remarketing ads, right? Remarketing ads is something like somebody goes to your website and then they go back to Facebook. Well, now they're seeing an ad. Like one of the uh, a college student asked me for a piece of advice on um, how to expose himself to more employers. I said, you know what you should do? I said, you should go have a website, colinaustin.com, right? Now, you're promoting, if I'm meeting with employers and say, oh yeah, like, hey employer, like check out my website, my whole portfolio's on there, my resume's on there, everything's on there, if you need to like check me out. So there's that. Employer now goes to the website, okay? Checks out website, then later that night, is laying in bed, goes to Facebook, and all of a sudden, they're seeing a video of that person that they were checking out. Like that, they went to that website and they're, so if they went to callinaustin.com and was checking me out, now they're on Facebook and they're seeing a video of Colin Austin being like, yo, employer, like stop, like you should hire me and this is why, right? Like that employer would freak out. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like if you, if, you, if you were scrolling through Facebook and you just saw a, you just saw a video of somebody that you, Inter interviewed earlier that day or like somebody that you had been talking to I'm like are you a freak out you'd be like, like I just met with this guy and now I'm getting a video of him trying to sell himself to me that's pretty awesome 
That's great. And the way you do that is with remarketing. They go to the website, there's a piece of code, and then you can create Facebook ads that basically know, hey, somebody went to your website and now they went back to Facebook and now they're seeing that ad. And the only reason they're seeing that ad is because they visited your website. You've all done it. You've gone to Amazon, you've searched for something, and then 20 minutes later you're on Facebook and you see that item on, Am on Facebook. It's on purpose. So how do you do that? How do you it's a piece of code. So on Facebook, uh, I have a video somewhere. If you email me, I'll send you the video. But you can set up a, a pixel is what it's called. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash power editor, maybe I can do this. And you see this right here. It says pixels. Okay, you click pixels. And then you can set up a pixel for your website. Okay, I don't know, it's just being super slow, but it'll allow, basically, Facebook will walk you through this and you can go to this thing, it's called Google. Type how to create, how to, how to put a pixel on my website and it'll show you how to do it. So, basically take a little snippet of code and you go to your website and you put it in the header of your website and that's called, it's a Facebook pixel and that's how it does that. It targets, you're basically targeting this pixel that you created, NSRL pixel, pixel ID, and it's a little piece of code, okay? Does that mean uh, go to, if they've been on your website, they, they will start. go to your particular video or whatever you posted, not just your general Facebook feed? No. No, so <laughs> when you create this Facebook pixel, which I've got several, um, this was a new one I was working on, but you create, a, you create this pixel and you put, I wish I could just, Yeah, I'm sorry, this is gonna just be too slow. Um, I'll just try to describe it as best as possible and then I can make a video or do something to show you later. But in, the, in that top corner, you're basically taking the pixel. Facebook will give you the code. You literally copy the code, you go to your website and the header of the code, you basically just drop the code into that header of your website, okay? Now, the pixel, like when you're creating the ad, it'll ask you at the bottom, um, so you can select the pixel. So if you have multiple websites, you will select the pixel that's relevant to the ad. Does that make sense? So now, now they go to the page, now they come back, and they're, they're being exposed to your ad only when they have visited your website. So you have to have editing rights to the website then for your own website? You do, okay. yeah. Make sense? Yes. No, but you can do the same thing with Google. They have, the, they have the same thing, retargeting based off Google AdWords and that kind of thing. So you, Google does the same thing. Um, now, the other thing, you know, a lot of people don't even realize this, Instagram and Shopify sites. Inst what's cool is like we have a Shopify website. If you open up, inst if you open up Instagram and go look at NS4L's account, so NS4L, you'll see a little button that says shop. Well, now you can actually have that linked to a Shopify website. So people will see what is an Instagram post, but there will be a little shopping bag in the corner. And they can click it, and it links directly to that item on our website. So now I'm using Instagram to actually sell physical products, which is really cool. That's a, a newer update. And, um, and then, of course, things like influencer marketing, which is huge. Maybe I can show you guys something there real quick. Um, So, this is somebody who is, I would consider an influencer in Gainesville, Florida. Her name's Allison. She has thir almost 35,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. And um, you see this right here? A day in my life at college. Look at what she's on. Okay, you click the video. She's got 9,000 views on this video. And oh, it's gonna do an ad. Dang it! But anyway, it shows her riding around on a scooter. It's a whole vlog. It's a whole thing. She's she's going to go ride a scooter for the first time at New Scooters for Less. Like it's a it's a whole story that she created. 
and she's exposing this to people who are now going to Google. There's somebody in Miami right now who's going to Google and say, life at the University of Florida, right? Now, she, I reached out to her, I found her, I found this 35, this person with 35,000 subscribers, 25,000 on YouTube, I paid her $475. She made a vlog around going to New Scooters for Less, she's talking about New Scooters for Less, and how New Scooters for Less is the top dealership in Gainesville, Florida, and how, <clears throat> you know, how we've had such an impact on the culture at, at the University of Florida, and she's talking about, guys, this is, as long as she keeps this YouTube channel, this thing will be up forever. And some college, somebody who's going to, to UF in the fall, this life at UF, they're going to find this life at college, University of Florida. They're going to find this video and they're going to be, oh, a scooter, that's something I should definitely think about when I get there. Oh, she's talking about new scooters for less. It's called influencer marketing. It's basically the same thing we do with celebrities on a national scale. You're just doing it on a micro scale. Right? There are people in Gainesville with 35,000 subscribers to their YouTube channel, with 25,000 people following them on Instagram. And you can say, hey, how much for you to promote my company? And you'll be surprised. I've had people expose our brand to 25,000 people. Around, like I, I found an account. It was all based around college football, but it wasn't college football. It was University of Florida football. It had like 25,000 uh, followers, and I paid them like $30 to make a couple posts about us. Like, it's, it's crazy and it's out there. There was a question? Yeah, I was just kind of curious how you came up with a number for her on what to offer her. I didn't, I said, what's your fee? <laughs> she said, I said, I was like, hey look, like, I've watched, I, this is how the conversation starts, because she rides a bicycle everywhere. I said, I, I watched a lot of your blogs, I see that you ride a bicycle. I was like, have you ever thought about a scooter? I was like, I own a scooter company and I really enjoyed your blog, I thought it was very interesting and Obviously, we've had an impact on UF, and I don't know if you consider riding a scooter around for the day, but if you'll like talk about our brand and maybe do a blog and talk about your experience riding a scooter, like I'd, I'd be interested in doing that. She was like, "Oh yeah, absolutely, I'd love to talk to you." So we sat down and talked, and I was like, "What's your fee? Like, what do you like? How much will it cost?" She's like, "Well, this is what I'm thinking: four hundred seventy-five dollars. I'll do a vlog. I'll do an Insta I'll do two Instagram story posts, and I'll do a post in my Instagram feed. Four hundred seventy-five bucks." I was like, "I was like, yeah, let's do it." So that's what I'm talking about. There's so many levels of social media, and that's why I can't, I wish I could just cram everything and we could stay here all day and just have a whole class on it. But just realize that this is influencer marketing, and this is a big part of social media right now. A huge part. Okay? Any other questions? One, Are we one out, more question. out of town? Time? One more question? No. I feel like it's usually just my story as the day goes on. Now, the only way, I, the only times I definitely categorize stuff is like with our YouTube channel, for example. You go to YouTube, there's like our vlogs, like that's all about our story. And then there's um, how to videos, like how to kickstart your scooter, how to do these things that help. Again, those are videos that provide value to our customers, right? Maybe they can't remember how to turn the headlight on, you know, whatever the case is, they can see a video that instructs them on how to do so. Um, that's really the only way I, I categorize it. If you go watch my Snapchat story right now, it's like, it's like guys, I'm going to go speak on social media. I'm super excited. And like, and this morning we were like uh, interviewing James Bates on a podcast that we're doing. I mean, it's just completely randomness and storytelling. Now, if you go look, I would highly say go look at Allison Shaper's Instagram account. The girl knows how to brand. I mean. There's a, she uses a filter on everything. Her color schemes are very, very similar. Like it, her posts are super, super intentional. But she just has that long-term strategy in her mind. You know what I mean? Like she, does, she actually has photo presets. I know her. And she yeah. has photo presets for every single. Exactly. Photo she exactly. So, and it's it's it, 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 it her Instagram strategy is way more intentional than my Instagram strategy. So I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with categorizing the content. Um, but it's nothing that I'm doing. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, I hope.
hope we can do something like this again. Like it's, I, I love this stuff a ton. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'll help you any way that I can. I know that if your businesses are better, Gainesville's better, and that's what I want, okay? So thank you so much.